Learning Objectives After completing this module, learners will be able to understand and describe the relation between dress codes and social hierarchy, understand and elaborate on the sumptuary laws and social hierarchy in the French society, understand and describe the differences in the notions of beauty, Understand and describe how European women reacted to the imposition of dress codes. Understand and describe in detail the impact of the two world wars on clothing. Understand and explain the transformation in dressing style in the colonial period. Understand and explain the British rules regarding dress code. Understand and explain designing of national dress and Swadeshi movement. Understand and elaborate on Gandhiji's experiments with clothing and khadi. Clothing, a social history. Since ages, all societies have observed some very strictly dress codes for men, women, children, and also for different strata of society. Clothes identified one's caste or social hierarchy. Before the dramatic revolutions and development of capitalist societies in the 18th century, people in Europe dressed according to regional codes. Their choice was limited to the availability of the type of cloth in their region and its cost. Class, gender and social status also impacted the clothing style. A number of factors changed the clothing style after the 18th century. Firstly, colonization of most parts of the world by Europe changed the outlook towards clothing in the colonies. Secondly, with the spread of democratic ideas, people want more freedom to dress up the way they preferred rather than follow the dictates of religion or region. Lastly, after the Industrial Revolution, when women started working in factories, their preference while clothing was comfort of working. The attitude towards clothing underwent a sea change. In the process, the Western style of dressing up for men became popular and gained acceptance across the world. Sumptuary Laws and Social Hierarchy During the medieval period, dress codes were imposed on people through laws. These laws elaborated in detail as to what different classes of society were supposed to wear. From about 1294 to 1789, when the French Revolution took place, the people of France were expected to strictly follow the laws called the Sumptuary Laws. Not only clothing, these laws also prevented those who were considered to be inferior from consuming certain foods and beverages. Usually this referred to alcohol and hunting game in certain areas. Even the number of clothes purchased per year and the material of clothing were prescribed in medieval France. Only the royalty could wear clothes made of expensive material like fur, ermine or silk, brocade and velvet. The velvet caps, made of material imported from France and Italy, were popular in amongst English men. England passed a law making it mandatory for all above the age of six, with the exception of the higher class, to wear woolen caps on Sundays and holidays. This law saved the woolen industry in England. After the French Revolution, the Jacobins 
started wearing sans culottes, which meant without knee breeches, unlike the fashionable knee breeches worn by the upper class. They started wearing clothes, loose and comfortable clothes. Blue, white and red were the dominant colours of their clothing. The simplicity of their clothing was meant to express the idea of equality. Sumptuary Laws and Social Hierarchy The end of sumptuary laws did not bring equality in terms of clothing in the European society. A number of aristocratic privileges and the laws that maintained those privileges were abolished, yet the difference in the upper and lower strata of the society was visible. The poor now were not barred by the law for eating or wearing by choice. What they wore was now governed by their earnings. Each class developed its own culture of dress. While being serious, strong, independent and aggressive were seen as male qualities, women in Victorian England were groomed to be docile and dutiful, submissive and obedient. From the early years, girls were laced up and dressed in stays to hold their bodies straight. Older girls had to wear corsets to appear slim and slender. Small-waisted women were admired as elegant and graceful. Wearing corsets inflicted a lot of pain on a girl's body, but they had to put up with this image of an ideal attractive woman. How did women react to these norms? Women grew up believing the false ideals of womanhood. Right from childhood, it was ingrained in their minds to have small waist, bearing suffering and to appear attractive, they must wear corsets, even if it meant insufferable pain. They accepted it all as normal. However, everyone did not agree with these values. By the 1830s, women in England started demanding their democratic rights. As the suffrage movement gained momentum, many began campaigning for dress reform. Women's magazines elaborated in detail that wearing tight dresses and corsets causes illness and deformities. It prevented normal body growth and also hampered blood circulation. Women fainted frequently due to excessive tight corsets. In America also, traditional feminine clothes were criticized for a variety of reasons. Long skirts swept the ground, collecting dirt and filth. The voluminous skirts were difficult to maintain and handle. They also hampered quick movement. It was argued that if clothes were comfortable and convenient, then women could work and become independent. The reformers and supporters had to suffer hostility and ridicule at the hands of conservatives. Many believed that women would not look beautiful and feminine in non-traditional dress. The reformers, however, remained persistent in their efforts. By the end of 19th century, a drastic change in styles of clothing was observed. Women started working after the World War I. Their clothes did not hamper their work. People started accepting ideas of the reformers who they ridiculed earlier. New Times New Materials Before the 17th century, the British women wore clothes made up of flax, wool 
and linen. These fabrics were expensive and difficult to maintain. Trade with India in 1600 made cheap Indian chins available in the European markets. It was a light, beautiful and easy to maintain fabric. Mass production of cotton textiles began in England during the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. These clothes were exported and also sold in local markets. They were purchased by a wide section of people in Europe. By the beginning of the 20th century, clothes made of synthetic material were introduced. Synthetic material was cheap, easy to wash and maintain. The clothes now were simpler, shorter and comfortable. The war The two world wars had a deep impact on women's clothing. In World War I, 1914-1918, the clothes got shorter out of necessity. In 1917, over 7 lakh women employed in ammunition factories wore trousers with blouse and scarves in sober colours. They also cut their hair short for convenience. The clothing styles now reflected seriousness and professionalism. Schools for children also emphasized the importance of simple and plain dressing. Gymnastics and sports were included in school curriculum for women. Those who took to sports wore clothes which did not hamper their movement. So, the pressures of new times paved way for comfortable, convenient and simple clothes for women. Transformations in Colonial India Indian men reacted to the Western style of dressing in three ways. First, some incorporated elements of Western styles in their traditional clothing. To them, Western clothes were a sign of modernity and progress. Second, there were men who completely rejected Western style of dressing. They were convinced that Western clothes would erode the traditional cultural identity. They steadfastly stuck to the traditional clothing. Third, a set of men preferred to wear Western clothes to work and changed into traditional clothes at home. Some found a different solution by combining the Western and Indian forms of dressing. Caste and conflict and dress change In India, the caste system defined what subordinate and dominant caste Hindus should wear eat, etc. These codes were also supported by law. Digression from the set codes invited violent reactions. British rule and dress codes In different cultures, specific clothing items convey different meanings. The contradiction can lead to misunderstanding and conflict. The headgear worn by the Europeans and the one worn by Indians is an example. While the Europeans removed hat as a mark of respect, the Indians did not remove turban, their headgear, in the presence of elders or superiors at all. The British were often miffed when Indians did not remove turban when they met the British officers. Shoes also created similar cultural controversy. While the British insisted that Indians take off their shoes when meeting a British officer or when entering a courtroom, the Indians urged them to understand that taking off shoes in a sacred place or home was different from a workplace or a courtroom. Shoes were permitted into the courtroom 
after many years of struggle. Designing the national dress During the freedom struggle, Indians began designing a national dress to portray a pan-Indian identity. The upper class started experimenting with dresses. Rabindranath Tagore suggested a dress for men which had elements of Hindu and Muslim dress. It was named Chapkan. In 1870s, Janana da Nandini Devi, wife of Satyendranath Tagore, the first Indian member of the ICS, adopted the Parsi style of wearing the sari pinned to the left shoulder with a brooch and worn with a blouse and shoes. This gained popularity with the Brahmo Samaji women and was named Brahmika Sari. This move, however, was not successful as women in different parts of India continued to drape sari according to the regional style. The Swadeshi Movement Mechanized spinning and weaving of clothes increased the demand for raw material like cotton and indigo in Britain. The political control of India helped the British in two ways. They forced peasants to grow indigo for vested interests and also found a huge market for their goods, especially cotton cloth in India. As a result, India's leading textile centres, Murshidabad, Machili Patanam and Surat, declined as there was little demand. In 1905, when Lord Curzon announced the partition of Bengal, Indians rose in rebellion. The Swadeshi movement was a reaction to this announcement. People boycotted foreign goods or clothes. Use of khadi became a patriotic duty. Though khadi was expensive and everyone could not afford it, Mahatma Gandhi used it as a symbolic weapon against British rule. Designing the National Dress to Mahatma Gandhi's Experiments with Clothing Mahatma Gandhi made khadi not only a symbol of self-reliance but also of resistance to the use of British mill-made cloth. In 1888, when Mahatma Gandhi went to London to study law, he adopted Western suits and gave up his traditional clothing of dhoti or pyjama combined with a shirt or coat. He adopted the Western attire so that he would not be laughed at. Even at Johannesburg, South Africa, while practicing as a lawyer, he wore Western suits with a turban. On his return to India in 1915, he dressed like a Katyavari peasant for some years. In 1921, he announced wearing a short dhoti with a chadar till 31st October 1921, but it became his dress for his entire life. To him, khadi was a sign of purity, simplicity and poverty and also a symbol of rejection of British mill-made clothes. Not all could wear khadi. Mahatma Gandhi wanted the entire nation to adopt khadi, but everyone could not follow his footsteps. Motilal Nehru was a nationalist and a successful barrister. He gave up wearing expensive western-style suits and adopted the Indian dhoti kurta, but these were not made of khadi. Baba Sahib Ambedkar never gave up the western-style suits. Sarojini Naidu and Kamla Nehru, prominent women leaders, wore coloured saris with designs, again not made of coarse, white homespun. Summary Let us summarise what we have learned. All societies have observed some very strictly dress codes for men, women, 
children and also for different strata of society. During the medieval period, dress codes were imposed on people through laws called sumptuary laws. Despite the end of sumptuary laws, the poor could not dress up or eat by choice because of lack of money. In 1830s, women in England started demanding their democratic rights and many also began campaigning for a dress reform. By the end of 19th century, a drastic change in women's styles of clothing was observed. The light, beautiful and easy to maintain Indian fabric, chins, became popular in Europe. In the colonial era, Indian men either adopted Western attire or combined elements of Western and Indian clothing for their dresses. A conflict between Indians and British arose due to cultural differences. During the freedom struggle, Indians began designing a national dress to portray a pan-Indian identity. The Swadeshi movement, popularizing Khadi, was a reaction to the partition of Bengal in 1905. Gandhiji experimented with different forms of clothing. Khadi was 